I have two speeches here. One's about five pages and one's about three pages. So in computer science, we have an acronym KISS. It means keep it simple, stupid. So I'm going to go with the three-page one. OK, students, let's imagine you're standing on the steps of BU. You're about to embark on a remarkable adventure. If you were like me, you came to BU because you wanted the option to take classes in a myriad of different subjects to satisfy the nooks of your intellectual curiosity. If you were like me, you frankly had no idea what that was. I, like many of you, had a natural propensity towards computers and thought that computer science was the science of programming computers. I was wrong. Fast forward to your first day in computer science class. For many of you, that was CS111 with Sullivan or CS112 with Snyder. I can remember distinctly the first problem set we did in CS112. We had to write a circular buffer. After that first problem set, I was hooked. I remember walking out of MCS at the wee hours of the morning with a big grin on my face. I remember writing mini Google and creating a game AI in Snyder's 112 class. But that's not what was important. The concept of recursion, of writing a beautiful algorithm to reverse a binary tree, or writing a hash table in 10 lines of Java, have stayed with me to this day. It was a fun, it was exhilarating, and it made me feel alive. I wanted more. So naturally, the next thing I did was I signed up for all the CS classes I could, and I learned a valuable lesson. You see, there's two types of CS classes, theory and applications. Theory classes often don't involve programming at all. Instead of spending hours debugging my applications, I found myself debating the finer points of Dijkstra's algorithm in CS330, or writing proofs in CS131. Each class, as Professor Apavu has said, would peel back a layer on the onion, revealing more complexity within. After we learned about data structures in CS112, I wanted to know how memory was laid out. So I took CS210, computer architecture. When I learned that you can manipulate memory directly in C, I wanted more. So I took CS410, software, advanced software systems, or as Rich West puts it, just software systems. When I learned what a kernel was, I wanted to write a kernel. So I took CS552, operating systems. As soon as I learned about networks, I thought, can I hack this? And of course, you can. Um, in Sharon's CS558 network security class. My education was a directed graph of whys. While working on all this coursework, I developed a friend group. We hung out in Builds, a makerspace in the basement of the CS department. While my formal education answered the whys, in Builds, that question changed into, why not? <laughs> why not paint the walls with murals? Why not drill through the door and install a monitor? Why not run an extension cord through the ceiling in order to support a 24-node cluster? Um, why not travel to China to compete in the student cluster competition? We traveled the world simply because no one stopped us. The one thing that relates all these activities is what I like to call the hacker mentality. We do things because they're fun and because we can. People in builds are motivated by knowledge itself not by money or fame. One of the biggest things we did was host Boston Hacks, a 24-hour hackathon. For those of you who don't know, a hackathon is an event where a bunch of students get together and spend the weekend creating something. They create anything from an app to a home security robot. I remember staying up all night the night before the hackathon, tracking the location of three different buses, that picked up people throughout the night. Armed with volunteers sharing their locations and frequent phone calls, I coordinated these buses to pick up 150 people from locations as far away as Toronto and New York, with many stops in between. Drowsy but excited, I watched as the buses pulled up and students streamed out, excited to get started hacking. Through builds, I learned that it's really hard to distinguish yourself doing the exact same thing as everyone else. 
but easy to distinguish yourself when you forge your own path. So the intro courses have what we call CAs. They're upperclassmen, undergraduates, uh, who hold office hours in the evening, long after professors have left, and help students with their problem set. <laughs> One of these CAs, Alex Breen, had an impact on me. He was magnanimous, funny, and most importantly, wicked smart. <laughs> he took the time to explain to students complex topics in a way that was understandable and most importantly, relatable. I wanted to be just like him. So fast forward a year, and I got the opportunity to do the exact same thing. In first for CS112, then for 210, and then I took up a step up and became a TA for network security. It brought me great joy to sit down with students and teach them a subject that I loved. As I'm sure the faculty here know, often students surprise you. They come up with innovative and exciting term projects. They see things in a different light. You, they carry the spark, and I, I should say you, because it's all of us, that makes BUCS so great. So now we need to get serious. In, as computer scientists, we sit in a privileged position. Everyone else gets to talk about the world they want to see. We get to code it. Our ideas form the backbone of the biggest bank, the, the way people communicate with loved ones, the planes, trains, and cars that transport people. Computer science is fundamental to every field. So I call upon you to use your talents, your time, your ideas to shape the world in your own vision. Don't let others use your talents for their own gain. The buck stops with you. You are responsible for the impact you make on the world. Make it meaningful. I want to end with a quote from Steve Jobs. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Try to have a nice family, have fun, save a little money. But that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. Thank you, and congratulations, fellow graduates.